Stephanie, or sorry, that is uh, Liz Beardsley in goal for the Terrapins. As Michigan will be in the home whites and Maryland in the visiting darks, we are off and running here at University of Michigan Soccer Stadium. Michigan with possession first. Working around here, Avery Peters, along with Tamia Tolber, anchoring the defense for the Wolverines as they start with a 2-5-4 formation. But a couple of those midfielders will drop back on the wings as you'll see some attacking midfielders push up in the middle. One of those here, Avery Kalita, a junior that has been a presence throughout her three years for Michigan as we have a chance here. This is Lily Bosley. Making her way into the box and her shot goes wide and will come out for a goal kick, but some excitement already for the Wolverines. Yeah, Bossy, it looked like had a chance to get that breakaway right there. But then it looked like it was Caroline Kutzaus who came in and kind of blocked that, leading to the errant shot, giving Maryland the ball back. Michigan, a team that has relied on their defense thus far this year. They're pretty much every category are being outworked except for goals. They're, they're being outshot. Their corner kicks, they have 25 on the year. They've given up 78 corner kicks. They're being dominated in that category, yet they've still managed to get good results against good teams. So it tells you that they are taking advantage of the few opportunities they get. Yeah, I'm curious to see how they play this game because when you looked at Penn State, Michigan seemed to really charge aggressively both on offense and defense. They were pushing possessions quickly, and then on defense, they were going after the ball compared to Penn State who played more of a zone defense and just to pr tried to prevent easy breakaways. I'm curious against Maryland, do they still go with that approach or do they look to have more methodical offensive possessions slow down the tempo a little bit and look to get better shots compared to attempting more shots. Kelsey Smith with the ball there, but commits the foul and Michigan will retain possession. You saw Peyton Bernard with a nice pass there to Smith. Bernard, one of the star freshmen for the uh, Terrapins, is on this team along with her twin sister, Drew. Drew hasn't appeared in a game this year. But those two will be presences for the years to come for the Terps and a team that has 15 freshmen on the roster looking to build in these next couple years. As Michigan now with a chance here. Anaya League. But possession will be given back over to the Terrapins. Michigan with that one shot, not on goal by Lily Bot Bosley thus far. Bosley, one of two freshmen starting for the Wolverines, along with Gabrielle Pritch. Pritch has been one of the stars for the Wolverines thus far and certainly has a bright future for Coach Klein as Maryland with some sustained pressure here. Just over three and a half minutes ticking down. Taken away, still up in the air, but Kalita calmly plays it back to Sparkowski. Now the other Avery, Peters, picking up, trying to find Abby Zuge. And now Peters goes wide to League, League with space to work. Over to Sammy Woods. Woods a clever chip in there, finds Kalita. Kalita lets it roll out. And now back to Woods quickly. And now back to Kalita. Kalita tries to go to the end line. Sliding tackle there, keeps possession into the middle. Michigan with a chance, a save there. Lily Bosley and now Sarah Bridenstine. Jenna Lang right there with the putback. 
And just like that, Wolverines have an early one nothing lead. Right place, right time for Jenna Lang. As Michigan already on the defensive. Good defense there, and that will go out for a goal kick. But huge to get that first goal early. Just in the fifth minute of play. Yeah, Bernard there really didn't have the look. Of course, Maryland trying to get back that goal that they just gave up. But I think took a shot a little too quickly instead of trying to let it develop there. Dangerous giveaway here, but just a little too much on that touch from Kelsey Smith. So that will be Jenna Lang's third goal of the year to go along with one assist. That ranks third on the team. Sammy Woods with five and Gabriel Pritch with four this year. So the big three separating themselves from the rest as they account for all but two Michigan goals this season. Peters, now over to Tolbert. As it really is just a perfect day here in Ann Arbor. Kalita with the takeaway, trying to find Zuge, the ball a little too on the inside. Zuge takes it away, going to her left with the shot, and calmly taken there by Beardsley, who's been active so far. Uh, so as Yasmin said, Marilyn not doing a great job of keeping her uh, out of pressure. Yeah, another good look there from Zuge crossing over to the left side of the goal. But that one Beardsley able to get her hands on instead of just deflecting preventing a rebound and a potential second shot. Yeah, and it was a little bit of a careless defensive effort there from Maryland as well, letting Zuge just run in behind and take that one away. Yeah, and I think when this Michigan team faced Penn State, the big difference was you really saw Penn State discipline sitting back in their zone, and it was not easy for Michigan to get those breakaways. They've now gotten a couple of them already here, and that's the reason that they're up seven minutes in. Yeah, it's almost like Maryland is, is pressing and allowing Michigan to get those runs in. But here, Sammy Woods trying to go at Maryland defense. And now a ball into the box. Trying to hold off the defender. Back to Bridenstein. Her ball into the box. Trying to find Woods on the back post, the header. And another save by Beardsley. Looked like Woods might have had a chance to go back to Zuge in the middle with that header, but chose to go for goal, and Beardsley with her second save of the night. Sorry, not night, <laughs> of the day. <laughs> and of course, we talk about Michigan being significantly outshot coming into this game. They were outshot 183 to 106. They already have five shots here. And the other thing I wonder, you talk about Maryland pressing a little. Obviously, they're probably frustrated with how the comp the conference slate has started, down one nothing here, but they also have to realize they got over 80 minutes left to play, and they can't go into panic mode. They have time to come back and just through a clean discipline style of play, get that goal back. It doesn't have to come in the next five minutes. It just has to come in the next 80 minutes. So I think we need to see a little more discipline on the defensive side and really making sure that they keep the ball in front of them. Because when Michigan's able to break away and it's one shooter against Beardsley, that's gonna, not going to go well for Merrill. As Woods trying to play this one, but commits the foul. Good defense there from number two, Ava Morales, sophomore midfielder. One of the stars for Maryland. She'll look to be the one getting the Terrapins back into this game. Mer Morales leads the team with three goals on the year. Lisa McIntyre and Catherine DeRosa with two. Beardsley plays this one deep. Kalita handles. And Michigan trying to reverse the left side, but now back to the right here is Peters. Peters still with it. Now a nice ball in, but good defense there 
from Caroline Kutsos. Yeah, that's the type of defensive play that Maryland needs right there. I think it was Lauren Wrigley kind of getting in the way there. And even just having that one defender, if she's positioned well, that will prevent Michigan from getting those shots off. Bridenstine, the senior, goes back to Kalitta. Now over to League. Tolbert. Bridenstine holds off Morales. Back to Tolbert. Trying to find Pritch there. Pritch been quiet so far in this one as Kalitta, Woods, and Bridenstine, and of course League have been very active for the Wolverines. Now Morales, beautiful ball here. Kelsey Smith. Smith goes to the end line, trying to get it back in. And a shot here. That was Lisa McIntyre with a chance, but well defended there from the Wolverines as that was Maryland's best chance of the night so far, or of the day so far. And it was a good look, but again, you look at the Wolverines' defense and it looked like there were kind of four players between McIntyre and the goal. And so when, when you have the defense set up like that, she really has no lane she can choose and get a good shot off. And that's what ends up quickly washing that rally. Sydney Urban, or Hayden Bernard over on the right side. And that ball goes awry and we'll come back out for a goal kick for Sparkowski. We talked about the goalkeepers. Liz Beardsley, the junior for Maryland, but played her first two years at the University of Georgia and had great success there. And has transitioned over to being a Terrapin. She allowed only 12 goals last season. That was the third fewest by a Georgia goalkeeper uh, in a season. Played 14 games, 14 starts. Had 34 saves on the year, six shutouts, including five to close uh, non-conference play consecutively. As now Maryland with some numbers. And beautiful defensive play there by Tamia Tolbert. And now Michigan with it. Jenna Lang, the goal scorer, plays it back to League. And now Sammy Woods. Over to Kalita in the middle where she is so comfortable with the ball. Calmly plays this over to Peters. Looking for the run. We'll see if that's on sides, but for now, now it will be blown for offsides. It looked a little too good to be true there for uh, the freshman, Gabrielle Pritch. Yeah, had that been on side, she would have had a great look because it was going to be another one on one. Of course, that one will get shut down. Wolverines a little too antsy. Of course, they've been playing very well so far, getting in front of the defense, but just could not do so legally there. Yeah, the vision from the midfielders looking for those long runs has been, been the success so far for the Wolverines. As Barkowski surveying her options. Plays it short for Peters. And now Tolbert, Maryland, content to let Michigan's defensive uh, crew pass it back and forth, but they get the turnover here. And a takedown here, foul will be called on Sammy Woods, so Maryland will have a free kick from just past half field. As Michigan's up to five shots on the day, Maryland at two. Michigan four shots on goal as we take a look at this penalty. It looks like Sammy Woods just a little too aggressive, trying to win the ball back there. Yeah, Michigan coming in only with 43 shots on goal in 11 games. So having four shots on goal already here less than 15 minutes in is particularly remarkable. Of course, Beardsley has saved three of them, did allow that one to go in. Open grass for Pritch and now Zuge plays it over for Bosley. And Michigan now back in the attacking third. 
as we tick down close to 30 minutes left in the first half. And yes, we tick down in college soccer. We do not tick up. <laughs> so when the clock strikes zero, that will be the end of the half. Bridenstine with the throw in. And Zugay unable to handle it. As we mentioned, Maryland's youth, but Michigan is also has a pretty youthful roster. They are starting four sophomores along with uh, two Four sophomores along with two freshmen, two juniors, and three seniors. So six underclassmen in the starting lineup. As Now a ball for Sammy Woods. Woods trying to get her right foot around it and unable to get much mustard on that. And Beardsley gobbles it up. Yeah, and I think for Michigan, we've seen their best chance is to get those breakaways. So it's going to be a little tougher if even if the ball goes out of bounds on Maryland and Michigan gets those throw-ins deep in Maryland territory, that still gives Maryland time to set their defense. And Michigan doesn't seem to be able to penetrate it that well more up the field. It's kind of in the midfield is where they seem to be best at breaking away Give, from the defense. Given away here by Michigan, Kelsey Smith with the ball in and deflected out, and that will be the first corner of the match for the Terrapins. It looks like it will be Lauren Wrigley to take this one. Maryland putting four players in the box currently. Looks like two more joining. Wrigley getting the instructions from the bench. Take back. As Maryland has positioned their players on the back post, Wrigley goes to the front post and well defended there, but back out. And now over to Wrigley again. Wrigley with a fake. And now goes back to her right. And good foot there from Peters. And that comes back out to Coyle, who just sends it out of bounds. Good pressure there from Maryland. They'll need more of that if they want to get back on the scoreboard. Yeah, Maryland held the ball well, but Michigan, of course, just staying disciplined, not too worried when Maryland gets the ball back after the initial miss, because Michigan right there, where they need to be, ends up forcing an errant shot for Maryland, because that was probably the only shot they had the opportunity to take. Given away here again, Kelsey Smith. Surrounded by Michigan players, but somehow got out of it for a second. Still fighting for it. Morales comes in now, but Kalita calmly oh plays it over to Woods with grass to run into. Reverses. Now Kalita in the middle. Can go left or right. Chooses to go left to Pritch. Pritch now. Goes left. And is taken down and will have a penalty. Beautiful move by Pritch. And the Maryland defender commits the foul in the box giving Michigan the penalty, but Pritch had a good chance if she didn't commit that foul either. And yeah, there's just another one of those breakaways for the Wolverines, and at that point, when you only have one defender and you're not in a position to go legally attack the ball, you almost have no choice. But of course, this gives the Wolverines a very solid opportunity to double their lead. So it looks like it will be Sammy Woods taking this. Woods has yet to take a penalty this season. Is one of two in her career. So not many stats to go off of, but Woods looking to put Michigan up 2-0. Beardsley in goal. Woods with the run up, goes left. No chance for Beardsley. Woods puts Michigan up 2-0 and adds to her team leading goals with six on the season. The penalty earned by Pritch and put away by the senior Woods. Michigan off to a great start in this one. And of course, once you get to the 
penalty kick. It's really just a mind game. And of course, Beardsley dives to her left. Woods kicks it to her right, as you'll see right here. And no chance to get that stop. Yeah, but you gotta compliment the technique there from Woods. Didn't give away which way she was going. And she put it as close to the corner as you can. For now, two of three for her career on penalty kicks. Maryland trying to regroup here in Ann Arbor as they are trying to go home, not getting shut out twice in their Michigan road trip. And I think for Maryland going forward, the key will be those takeaways in Michigan territory that have looked a little uncharacteristic of the Wolverines. Terps have not done anything with it yet, but I think their best chance really at this point is gonna be aggressive defensive play on the Michigan side, not on their own side, because that's where they run into trouble and end up with those breakaways that have cost them two goals. You certainly have to hope for a little bit of a drop in quality too from the Wolverine side as Michigan has not come out flat like they did last Sunday. League finding Lang who goes over to Woods. Woods now to Tolbert. Michigan up to seven shots on the day. Six of them on goal. Just a tremendous percentage and pressure on Beardsley. As now Zugay finds Bridenstein with room to work. Bridenstein goes back post. And now trickling across the front of the goal. It was Lily Bosley who tried to get her foot on it. But Michigan inches away from getting a third goal of the first half. As we will have our first substitution of the match. This will be Callie Burrell that will come in for Jenna Lang, the goal scorer. Burrell, the sophomore from Evanston. Yeah, looking back at that opportunity right there for Michigan, again, they've continued to attack, and they had the look, but I think that was better defended by Maryland. And that's why Michigan wasn't able to really get a precision shot off. They just kind of had to bounce it and hope it went in. And that's what caused the shot to go wide and keep this Michigan lead at two. As Michigan will earn a corner here, Bridenstine will be set to take it. Michigan's first corner of the match. The righty, Bridenstine, putting her hands up. She'll deliver this one in. Goes to the back post, League trying to get a header on it, and it floats into the hands of Beardsley. But again, more pressure applied by the Wolverines attack as we have a Maryland player down and we'll get a whistle blown. Looks like that is Kelsey Smith, uh, their coach's former team. Uh, and then they'll travel to Nebraska and Iowa before coming home for a weekend with Wisconsin and Indiana. So Maryland in a little bit of a the middle of Big Ten play trying to turn the season around, but certainly hasn't been helped by the quality of opponents thus far. As Maryland, so Kelsey Smith is back on, so good sign for the Terrapins. League finds Zuge in the middle. Zuge chips it in, header away there. And 
Now Zuge again. Three Terrapins in the area and taken away finally by Morales. Content to send this one down the sideline. Tolbert wins the race with Smith and Michigan will regroup. Tolbert finding herself on the right side now. As Pritch was taken down there, but no call from the referee, Eulogio Vialpando, referee of today's match. Kelsey Smith, three Michigan jerseys around and taken away there by Kalita. But I think we're seeing here, now that Michigan has this 2-0 lead especially, they are very content to play this game slowly. We see them, when there's kind of pressure, just backing it up. In some cases, just sending it all the way back to Sparkowski. Because as long as they can hold on to the ball, as they're not able to do here, that's the biggest key to keeping Maryland off the board. He's been mentioning how important this Penn State-Michigan State matchup is. Penn State got on the board first. And they're leading the Spartans 1-0. So if that result holds, Penn State will be in sole possession of first in the Big Ten. We'll keep you updated on that matchup. But right now, Maryland with numbers, a three on four. And that ball a little too far out in front of Peyton Bernard. As Tolbert with it. And now Bridenstine trying to catch Maryland on the counterattack. Sends this up for Pritch. Pritch one on one. Goes back to her left. Another defender to beat. Gets it into Bridenstine. Nice spin move. Bridenstine takes the lefty shot. And just wide. What an attempt from Bridenstine from about. 25 yards out. As Michigan playing with supreme confidence in this one, we take another look. Yeah, not an easy shot, but she got it pretty close. But it almost feels like for this Maryland defense, their best option might just be forcing those tough shots because if they try to take the ball away before they happen, that's when it ends up leading to the easier shots. If Michigan's able to start making those shots, they could really start putting goals up on the board. Morales. Back to Kutsos. And now Coyle over to the right side. Now playing up ahead. Looks like Anaya League will win that race. Chooses to go back to the middle, but Maryland not applying pressure. They are pressing a little higher than they were at the start of the game. Makes sense as they are now in a 2-0 deficit. As that will come back as we have a Maryland substitution. Eva Maori coming on for Kelsey Smith, who got dinged up earlier. Hopefully that's just precautionary for Kelsey Smith as Maori, a sophomore forward, comes in. One of 11 players from the state of Maryland on this Terrapin roster. And one of six sophomores to go along with 15 freshmen. So really trying to build a program is uh, Coach Megan Zemzer. Katie Coyle over to Caroline Kutsos. Errant pass there taken away by Avery Peters. And now Tolbert. One of the most solid defenders in the Big Ten. And now 
anchoring the attack for the Wolverines. Maryland applying a little more pressure. Michigan having a little more trouble getting it into the Maryland attacking third. As we are past the halfway point in this first half. Down to 18 minutes left here at the University of Michigan Soccer Stadium. Zuge wins the ball back, now goes to Woods. Woods trying to find Bosley on an overlapping play, but well taken care of by Liz Beardsley. Michigan up to 10 shots on the day, seven shots on goal. Maryland has yet to get a shot on goal. They've had a couple chances, but only three shots to show for it. Lots of contact here as Peters went jumping into the substitution for Maryland, Eva Mowry. Looks like Mowry is okay after that, but Maryland will be given the free kick. And that is now five fouls against each team. So both teams playing very physically here. Even Michigan with this 2-0 lead, they're not playing that conservative. I think we've seen them maybe slow down the tempo a little bit when they have the ball. But on defense especially, they're still playing aggressively, trying to get that ball back. They're not just sitting in zone back in their own third. This battery also. This was played short left. And now back to Katie Coyle. Maryland just outside the 18. Coyle trying to find her teammate Wrigley on the overlapping run. And Wrigley will be taken down there by Tolbert. Looks like she is holding her calf area. Might be a cramp or a Charlie horse. It did come off Wrigley, so it will be a goal kick once we are ready to resume play. Hopefully this is just a short term knock up, but the yeah, trainer so will come good, out here good. I'm gonna get you for the second time for the Terrapins. As the clock stops at 16, 13 left in the first half. As we take a look at this play. Didn't look like there was any contact, so it might just be a cramp, as it is pretty hot out there on the turf and again, very sunny, easy to get dehydrated out here. Coming in at 2-1-1, one, one. they had the loss to Illinois, split or tied against Penn State, and then they have the big rivalry game at home against Michigan State next week. And Maryland coming in 0-3-1, but as you said, their schedule does get easier after this. Yeah. Give it away here as Morales takes it from Bridenstine. Morales trying to find Maori. And Maryland with some applied pressure. And that Michigan State, Michigan game will be available on Big Ten Plus. Morales plays this in, Tolbert. Looks like an offsides will be called on Maryland. Tolbert thought for a second she was being uh, called for a handball and was puzzled, but simply an offsides and Michigan will put it back into play. 15.30 left in the first half. As Sparkowski hasn't had to do much in this first half. And it really feels like Maryland's done a decent job getting those takeaways. As we see right there, <laughs> unsuccessful attempt. But I think that pressure's worked. They just haven't really been able to do anything with the ball once they get it. That was a substitution Callie Burrell in for Michigan. But now Maryland on the counterattack. Reverse here. to Peyton Bernard. Bernard goes to her right, trying to get it in. Well defended by League. 
but only out to Maori. And now Urban. And now Bernard in the middle to Sydney Urban. Urban goes across. As that is another Michigan substitution, Taylor Brennan in for the Wolverines. Played that out for the Maryland throw in. So Michigan has made two substitutions, Maryland has made three. Good sustained pressure here from the Terrapins. Kutsos. Miscommunication there from Urban, but Maori now with it. And now Maryland in the box. Morales, her pass deflected and Lee cleared it out. And now Michigan finally regains possession. Sammy Woods just telling her team to settle it down, maintain possession here. Kalita. Yeah. So maybe I'll do that. If you want to, do it. Over to but Lee. Take it with, if you're going to move it. Now Burrell. Position, take it with you. Okay. Take the back out with you. But, Lee. Uh, you should be fine. Pritch. And then during halftime, if I'm not. I'm Chips not it up ahead. Terrapin. So. Take it away. And now Bernard. Trying to get past Lee. Does so. Still has several Michigan defenders to beat. Goes to the middle for Morales. Morales room to work, tees up a shot, and well taken there by Stephanie Sparkowski as that is her first save of the night and the first shot on goal for the Terrapins. And still good defense there by Michigan. Of course, Morales gets the shot on goal, but with where Michigan's defense is and with where Morales' teammates are, she really had no choice but to take that shot, which still wasn't terribly difficult to save for Sparkowski as she gets her first action here this afternoon. Vicki Jones, the sophomore coming in for Avery Kalita. Kalita, one of the most active players for the Wolverines, so we'll get a much needed break. Michigan can afford to do so, up 2-0. Vicki Jones, sophomore midfielder from San Lorenzo, California. One of six Californians on the Michigan roster. That actually equals the amount of Michiganders on the roster. So Michigan pulling a lot from the West Coast. That is a soccer factory out there. Tolbert. No one on the end of her pass. And Beardsley taking her time. 11.26 left in the first half. Jones. Now Peters. Peters to Pritch. And her pass deflected and taken away. And now Peyton Bernard again with it. Well defended there. Beautiful challenge there from Anaya League. And now Michigan on the counter attack with Burrell. Burrell takes a shot. That was from distance. The oohs and ahs from the crowd went up when Burrell laid the foot to that, but didn't really have a chance. Yeah, I just don't think that shot really was that necessary. The Wolverines strategies to score seem to be either get the breakaway and get a close range shot or put a number of players near the goal and then just kick it into that traffic and hope it just kind of bounces in one of their players gets a head on it maybe i just don't think the long range shots are really the way to de develop their offense and then they also will give maryland the ball back sooner at a point where time does matter, as Maryland so far seemed to clearly be outmatched, trying to do something to get two goals. And of course, the more possessions they get, they have more time to get back in this game.
Under 10 minutes left in the first half. Michigan just trying to patiently play this out. They'll be happy to take a 2-0 lead into the locker room. Bridenstein, now Peters. Peters to Jones, now Tolbert. And Pritch tried to find Woods on the run, but well taken away by Coyle. And intercepted there by League. Burrell, now to Bosley. Bosley doing well in the absence of Casey Lawrence. Bosley pa Bosley's pass there, unable to find Anaya League. And now Burrell steps back to cover for League. And good help defense there by Bosley. Jones delivers that one out of bounds, and we will have a couple of substitutions here for Michigan. We will have 23 Sierra Sargent and seven Jasmine Reigns coming in. Sargent, a sophomore from Manhattan Beach, California, and Jasmine Reigns, a freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia. So Coach Jennifer Klein opening up the bench a little bit in the closing minutes of the first half. Sophie For Maryland, Sophie Venice coming on. Venice is senior from Calabasas, California. Previously attended Oregon. So several transfers on this Maryland team. We mentioned Beardsley coming over from Georgia, but Urban coming from Florida, another transfer, as well as Katie Coyle previously attending Notre Dame. So both the recruiting class and the transfer portal playing dividends for the Terrapins as Michigan now with numbers. The recent substitution, Sierra Sargent, Gives it away, was trying to find Woods. But Vicki Jones intercepts this. And now Woods with room to work, one on one. Doesn't go for the overlap with Sargent. Calmly plays it back for Jones. The league. Sargent. Tolbert. Jones. And back to Peters. Taken down there. That was Michigan's Jasmine Reigns. To be in position, stop the attack, end up causing the foul there. So it feels like that's really the strategy for Maryland's defense. The question now, I think, really for Maryland is how can they get their offense going? They've had possession, they've gotten it into the middle of the field. It's really just that last third is the question for Maryland. As here's a chance, Coyle goes in, deflection comes out to Maori. Maori goes wide. And now low driven ball into the box and that'll earn a corner for the Terrapins. And that I think was the right strategy for Maryland going near the corner and then pushing it into the center. There was traffic there with the Wolverines defense, but all they could do was force it out of bounds, set up this corner kick. Maryland now gonna get another opportunity. As you see, they have seven players in the box. It gives them a chance to try to knock one in. Morales delivers this one. Was close to the head of Sidney Urban, but comes out. And now driven in again by Isabel. De Prima and Michigan calmly gobbles up that effort. 
And just a solid defensive stand there, Michigan not panicking with the ball on their own side of the field. Hasn't been that deep very much this game, but just staying in their zones in Maryland, never really getting a shot off, just kind of needed to hope a ball would bounce in, and it did not. Eden White coming on for Maryland. Another transfer, senior from Portland, Oregon, previously attended Santa Clara. So, Michigan, Maryland has brought on four players from the bench. Two of them have been transfers, and the other two are freshmen. So, again, a lot of new pieces to this Maryland roster coming over in the last couple years. As a chance here. A shot taken, but blocked there before it got to Starkowski. That was Kennedy Bell on the shot. Coyle from distance, and just a little too under that one. But again, Maryland getting the better of Michigan in the last few minutes. Yen controlling possession a little better, but even so, I still just don't think they're pushing their offense downfield enough to give themselves multiple options, which just would make it harder for Michigan to pick where to defend. When it's really only one shot option, that just makes it really easy for Michigan to crowd the ball and because they, there really is no guesswork on the defensive side. Acres of space for Peters, but quickly approaching is Sophie Vinnis. Vicky Jones plays it for Tolbert. And now Taylor Brennan, and over to Burrell. Jones, long ball, too long for Bridenstein. Down to two minutes, 10 seconds left in the first half. Looks like we will be heading into the locker rooms with a 2-0 Michigan lead, barring some last minute heroics in this first half. Stein to Woods. Woods goes over her head and trying to get past the second defender, but and looks like we will have a a foul call will be against Maryland. Looks like they thought it was an offsides call and we're preparing to go downfield, but it will be a foul call and Michigan will have a free kick in a dangerous position here. Bridenstein set to take it as Maryland scrambling to get back in their defensive positions. A little miscommunication here. Kutsos just told to take a couple steps back by the ref. Bridenstine set to put this one in. Goes lofty, and no Michigan headers in the area, but dangerously played back in. Didn't matter as Michigan was called for offsides there. As now 40 seconds left in the first half. As the clock ticks down, what do you take away from this first half, Zach? I mean, I think Michigan, definitely early on, they were playing off of the breakaways. I think when Maryland has a little more time to set their defense, they're able to shut down Michigan's offense pretty well and force those more difficult long-range shots. But just on the offensive side, Maryland, I just don't think has created enough space and to the point where they have multiple different passing lanes where they would force Michigan's defense to spread out and open up potentially better shots than just long distance shots from outside the penalty box.
Absolutely. And we did see Klein use five substitutions in that first half. Uh, Burrell, Reigns, Brennan, Jones, and Sargent. Uh, so as we start the second half, looks like Michigan with most of their starters back in. Burrell remains in in uh, midfield for the Wolverines. But Michigan back out, up 2-0, and a quick foul here by the Terrapins. After that first half, Michigan held the advantage in shots, 11 to five, shots on goals, seven to one. Uh, saves, of course, Maryland had to make five saves. Michigan, uh, Sparkowski with just the one save. And now fouls uh, about even. Michigan's committed seven, Maryland has committed six, and the corners in favor of Maryland, two to one. So as we see, Michigan starting the second half with Sparkowski, Zugay, Bosley, Burrell, Tolbert, Bridenstine, Pritch. And Maryland gives it away, and now Kalita with a head of steam, trying to hold off Bell. And over to Bridenstine. Now Bosley. So Michigan, other than Sparkowski, Tolbert, Bridenstein, and Peters, as well as Anaya League, all played the entire first half. Tolbert. And now Pritch. Over to Bridenstein. Long ball up ahead, looking for Zugay, trying to get ahead on it. But it looks like the foul will go against Zuge. Yeah, I thought that maybe Bridenstein could have worked the ball in a little closer herself before trying to pass it off. I like what the Wolverines are trying to do there, get multiple players into the penalty box, but felt that was a little too long distance, not really an accurate pass, and the foul negates it anyway. Long time on that throw in. And given back quickly, but now Maryland with it again. No call there as Kalita, or sorry, that's Pritch. A nice lefty ball there for Burrell. Burrell gets it on the second attempt, goes with the left, and deflected out. Good positioning there by the Maryland defender. As that will go out for Michigan's second corner of the game. That was. Eden White getting the crucial touch. I think Liz Beardsley probably would have uh, gobbled that up, but who knows, Michigan did have a deflect deflection goal earlier in the game. Bridenstein set to take the corner. Plays this one in, long to the back post. Pritch gets ahead on it, but just sends it wide. And going back to that last shot, that was both McIntyre and White there for the, the Terrapins. And I think that's the big thing. When you just have one player, it's a lot easier to maneuver around while you're dribbling. But with both of them there, that really is what prevented it from becoming a threat on Liz Beardsley. So 21, Isabel DePrima will come back on. DePrima saw uh, 27 minutes in the first half. So it's already warm and we will take the place of Wrigley. As Beardsley sends this one into the box. And Michigan able to defend Pritch. Lovely touch over for Bosley. Bosley tied Michigan's lead with three shots. 
Sammy Woods also had three. All three of Sammy Woods' were on goal, in fact. And Bosley, one of her three was on goal. Jenna Lang back on, who opened the scoring early for the Wolverines. And now Peters. Over to Lang. Zugay, well defended there by Eden White. And a foul goes against Michigan. Just over five minutes ticked down in the second half. Maryland wants to get back in this game. They'll certainly need to put one on the board relatively soon. And this is the second time now we're seeing them bring Beardsley out for a free kick in midfield, really trying to take advantage of having that extra player on the attacking third, knowing that Beardsley will have time if necessary to retreat, but you don't normally see that that far out in the field. Yeah, certainly interesting decision there, but again, not much. Heard as Beardsley will have plenty of time to get back after delivering the ball into the box. Regardless, Michigan with it now gives it away. Again, one of those turnovers you were talking about at the start of the second half that Coach Klein will want her team to limit. Because that was just a miscue by Michigan's defense. But applying pressure here. Beardsley gets it out, but Bosley calmly plays that one back to Peters. Nice ball here. Beautiful first touch by League. Beautiful cut to the inside. League now goes back to the outside for Burrell. Burrell, one on one, goes to the end line. Cuts it back in, trying to find Pritch in the middle. Pritch gets taken down, and the ref will signal a foul against Pritch, it seems. Of course, the foul ends up going against Michigan, but I think this game flow really has favored Michigan in the sense that we haven't really seen a lot of sustained offense on either side. But if you're on the Wolverine side, you'll take this just because it takes time off the clock and there really hasn't been any signs of the Michigan defense wavering at all. The question is, if you're Maryland, what do you do to really break through and give yourself legitimate opportunities to score since you have to do it twice here in these final 37 minutes? Yeah, so a little bit of a delay here as Caroline Kutsos gets cleaned off on the sideline, possibly some blood uh, from that contact at the referees. Telling her to get off, and looks like she'll need to get cleaned up, so a substitution will come on. And looks like it will be Lauren Wrigley coming back in. That's a good sign for the Maryland Terrapins. As the clock stopped at 37 minutes, and now we will be back in play. Ball up ahead here for Bernard. Hasn't had much of the ball. Saw a lot of the ball in the first half. And now room to work with here. Jenna Lang. Couldn't get it past Eden White. And now a nice inside foot there from Bernard. Gets it to Wrigley. Wrigley unable to keep that one in play. We'll go out for a Michigan throw-in. White's header. Good body control there from Sydney Urban. As Tolbert will be the only one to chase this down. Didn't have the pace to let it go out of bounds, so chooses just Calmly spin back to the middle, and now Burrell with it. Again, Maryland applying a lot more pressure, and now a takeaway here in the box is Maryland with a chance. And beautiful defending there by Bridenstine as 
It was Eva Mowry that was free in the box for a split second before Bridenstine came over from the weak side. Yeah, once again, Michigan handed Maryland one of their best scoring chances of the game with that turnover, but then their defense coming through once again. You'd like to see less pressure on their defensive side by getting rid of those turnovers, but the defense has stood up very well with only one shot on goal. Another miscue there, but Maryland unable to capitalize as Kalita was there. Now plays it up ahead. Beautifully weighted ball for Bridenstine. We'll see if Bridenstine chooses to play another one of her balls in, but goes open to the middle for Lang. Lang had Bridenstine back briefly, and now a miscue here. Burrell there to take it over. Goes back to the middle. Again, Lang has been open in the middle. Just outside the 18. Goes with the left. Deflection. And out for a Michigan throw-in. Sorry, corner. So unlike in previous games, Michigan actually now holds the corner advantage. Uh, three corners to two. As we mentioned at the top of the show, how that was one of Michigan's weaknesses. As we take a look at Michigan's upcoming schedule, Zachary, what do you see here? Yeah, I mean, Michigan State, of course, is the big game. In-state rivalry, Michigan State currently tied atop the Big Ten. Of course, that'll change if they don't come back against Penn State. And then, of course, going back out on the road. And that one is in. The corner kick is converted, Gabe. That is uh, Gabrielle Pritch getting on the board for the Wolverines as we were just in the thick of talking about Michigan's upcoming schedule and Bridenstine lays a perfect ball in, finds the head of Pritch as we take another look. Yeah, Pritch just using, it looks like it may have come off of the Maryland defender possibly. That was seven, Sydney Urban in the area. But the goal will be credited to Gabrielle Pritch, assist by Sarah Bridenstine. Yeah, Michigan really had not been doing much offensively this second half, but still turned what didn't even seem to be much of a threat into a corner kick. And then you just never know what's going to happen there. Just send the ball into traffic, and there's just the lucky deflection into the goal, and all of a sudden it's a 3 nothing game and really makes it comfortable for the Wolverines. Yeah, so that's... That's Gabrielle Pritch's fifth goal. So again, we've had goals from the three top goal scorers from Michigan. Woods got her sixth, Lang got her third, and now Pritch gets her fifth of the season. And now Michigan back on the attack. Bridenstine goes in early, finding Woods. And a little too high on the bounce there as Woods is unable to get much of a foot to that. Yeah, good look there for the Wolverines. Just not quite able to, as you said, get the angle with that pass sailing a little in front of Woods and results in Maryland getting the ball back on the goal kick. So that is the first assist of the match for Michigan. Both of the previous goals were unassisted. And so Bridenstine gets her third assist of the season, putting her second on the team only behind Avery Peters. Has Michigan well ahead of their 1.18 goals per game average on the year. As the offense has really shown up in a big way today. Again, this is the most goals Michigan has scored in a game this season. Their previous high was two. Or sorry, they did score three goals against Western Michigan back on September 10th. That was a 3-2 victory here in Ann Arbor. But Michigan has yet to score four goals this season, so maybe something to strive for there from Jennifer Klein's squad. Yeah, it's really been a, Michigan's been a defense-heavy team through their first 11 games, only scoring 13 goals, but then only giving up eight goals during that time, less than one a game. So they've really depended on the defense. And here we've seen their defense has been very dominant. Mich Maryland rarely threatening at all but getting their offense going a little early in the game really had the tempo, able to push past that Maryland defense. We've seen it slow down a little later in the first half here in the second half, but just got that corner kick to go in. So it looks like Sammy Woods might have had 
some blood on her jersey got cleaned up there as the players take a little bit of a hydration break, an informal hydration break. As the clock is stopped at 32 minutes and 29 seconds here in Ann Arbor. And see, now I think really is the time you can start thinking if you're Michigan about how you want to rotate your personnel in this final just over half an hour, knowing there's a, they are in pretty good shape to get this win. And do you want to start giving your younger players more of an opportunity to see what they can do before you go into that huge matchup against Michigan State? Morales with a shot well defended there by Bridenstein, putting the body on the line, but Morales get, gets to it again, and now goes in and just over the head, as that was Anaya League. And now Bell, not even close to the goal there. Maryland trying to get one back at least. Yeah, Maryland there, had a sustained offensive possession, but even so, the positioning of the Michigan defense was superior throughout, and that's really what's allowed Michigan to maintain this shutout, not so much controlling the ball the entire time as much as setting themselves up well when they don't have the ball to maybe not get it back immediately, but get it back without even a shot on goal. Couple players down there. Looks like it's Tolbert is still down for the Wolverines. Struggling to get up as the play is on. As it looks like Sammy Woods has switched jerseys, so is now wearing a number 14 jersey. So don't get confused. Looks like Tolbert is back up, but gingerly running. We see her over here, as well as Anaya League. Taken away here, Sammy Woods in the clean number 14, formerly number three. And Pritch try to get onto that one, but a foul is called, and Michigan will have a free kick about 40 yards out. Tolbert is staying in this game, not substituting, even as we saw. As we take a look at this foul here. Sydney Urban committing the foul there. Bridenstein in her usual spot behind the set piece. Lofts it in deep. Tried to find Pritch again. Sammy Woods now and gets it in. If it works, it works. Sammy Woods with her second goal of the day. New number, no problem for Sammy Woods there. Beautifully lifted ball in by Bridenstein and the deflection comes right down and Woods able to get a left foot, a toe onto that one. Yeah, Michigan getting two goals here in the second half, one from the corner kick and then that free kick almost serving like a corner kick just because of where it occurred from. And Michigan just taking advantage of good bounces there. And just with the action occurring so close to the Maryland goal, just not giving their defense any real advantage in setting up. That goal is credited to Sammy Woods, her second of the day, her seventh of the year, adding to her team lead. Assists will be given to both Sarah Bridenstine on the set piece delivery, as well as Abby Zugay, who got a deflection to get it over to Sammy Woods there. So Zugay gets her first assist of the year. Bridenstine with her second of the day and her fourth of the season. And Michigan sets a new season high in goals, 4-0 as 
All the wheels are turning. Everything's clicking for the Wolverines and Jennifer Klein's squad today. And now Maryland currently sitting at a 9-0 Michigan road trip here as they lost to Michigan State by a score of 5-0 on Thursday. As we still have 29 minutes, a lot could happen still in this second half. We'll certainly see both teams open up the open up their benches. As Michigan a startling nine shots on goal today. Four of them have gone in. Just an offensive clinic for the Wolverines. Yeah, I believe only two shots on goal in the second half, but they both have gone in after they pounded seven shots on goal pretty early in this game to get that 2 nothing lead. Zuge unable to find her teammate Bosley there. committed by Halita. So the two goals scored by Sammy Woods, a senior leader for the Michigan Wolverines. Gabrielle Pritch with the other goal, a freshman, and Jenna Lang with the, with the first goal, a sophomore. So certainly some fresh young talent on this Wolverine squad as that Maryland attack goes awry. And well played by Michigan once again. Maryland pushing the ball down the field, but not really having a nice setup there. And Michigan able to just force it out on Maryland, get that goal kick, and get the ball back. Sydney Urban. Over to Morales. Bell, nice little inside touch, overlapping play. And the pass back to Morales, unable to be completed as Kalita takes over. Gets it to Pritch. Pritch with lots of options here. Michigan with numbers. Chooses to go herself. Now over to Sammy Woods. Woods goes to the end line, gets past one defender, and chips it in, but right into the waiting hands of Beardsley. Beardsley quickly out. And the corner angle there wasn't particularly strong from Woods, but given what the Wolverines have done, getting two goals just by pushing, I don't really mind the look there, just hoping maybe something would open up and she could pass it into the center. Just nothing open there. Yeah, or maybe get a deflection and another second chance goal, possibly. But either way, Michigan dominating the, the possession in the second half as they did in the first. Kalita, again with room to run, using her speed and long strides. Tried to get this one into Pritch, but all Maryland could do was get that one out for a throw in. And we'll have a couple substitutions, one from each team. Vicky Jones comes back in for Michigan. Zugay will come out. And then on the Maryland side, Hannah Shapiro will come in. She will replace Isabel De Prima. Hannah, Hannah Shapiro getting her first action of the day, a freshman from Pleasantville, New York. We're seeing once again this free kick coming out from the corner, but Maryland gonna send Beardsley out over there, give themselves an extra player around midfield. Beardsley drills this one up. Ping-ponging around. Michigan trying to maintain possession and Bell, aggressive there, will be called for the foul as Tolbert takes another physical hit. 
And they'll stop the clock to check if Tolbert is okay. It's like Tolbert shakes it off and tells the ref, yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> As over in East Lansing, Michigan State has gotten on the board. They're still down 2-1 to Penn State. We'll see if the Spartans can pull off any magic with 20 minutes left over there. Nice, beautiful, overlapping play. League now with it. Goes to her right, gets it into the far post. Well defended there as Lily Bosley was trying to get on the board for her first goal of the day. But Michigan still on the attack. Bridenstine isn't picked up, takes a shot. Again deflected, but Bridenstine with it again. And now Kalita getting on the action, goes to the end line. And goes for the short angle, but earns the corner. And Michigan, or Maryland rather, handled that pressure pretty well. Of course, it is going to set up a corner. Michigan did convert on their last one. You saw the chance there earlier for Bosley, but I think it was McIntyre who got in front, and that was the positioning difference that likely prevented a fifth goal. Now we'll see what Michigan is able to do right here. Maryland really crowding the goal. Michigan spread out a little more. Reidenstein plays it in, and Pritch just over the top. Looks like a foul may have been called regardless. Pritch certainly a force in the air. And a good setup right there. But of course, it's going to be a foul anyway. The shot went a little high, but that's almost the same formula Michigan used on the last corner kick to get that one to go. Yeah, really impressive to note that Bridenstine, you can use either foot to get that corner in. And that one she took with her left foot. Maryland plays this back quickly. Urban trying to find Bell. Kalita again with the middle. So many times today we've seen Kalita take that passes. This goes through the legs of the Maryland defender, but recovered nicely and shielded off for a goal kick. Another substitution for the Wolverines. As we will see New player come in, Stella Tapia comes in for Anaya League. Tapia, freshman defender from Montclair, New Jersey. now with it. And now a chance here. Kennedy Bell with speed. Takes a shot and well defended there. Save made by Stephanie Sparkowski. Possibly Maryland's best chance of the night, but Sparkowski closed that angle down and Bell didn't really have too much to work with. Yeah, and it was a good breakaway for Maryland. The problem is she had no one to pass to. The Michigan defense forced her out into the corner, and so she got the shot off, but it was a very predictable shot, didn't really have much of a window, and that made it a lot easier for Sparkowski to save that. So Maryland corner in, and Vicki Jones got ahead to that to get it out for the Wolverines as now on the run is Lily Bosley. Bosley goes past two defenders, gets grabbed, and now taken down, and a foul will be given. But what a run by Bosley there. As the crowd on their feet, or maybe not on their feet, but pounding their feet. 
Yeah, and of course, quick turnaround there. Maryland has the corner kick. And then Bosley just took it around fast and ends up getting a yellow card to Kutsas as she fouled on the breakaway outside the penalty box. But it still may have not been a bad foul because Michigan really had numbers there. They had the momentum. And that's the formula that they used to score the two goals in the first half was get out quickly before Maryland can set. Chipped in there looking for Bosley and deflected will come out for a goal kick. As the yellow card was issued to Caroline Kutsos, first yellow card of the match. And now for Maryland, Kelsey Smith coming back in for Kennedy Kelsey Bell. Smith. So yeah, it's been a physical game, but just the first yellow card of the match right there. Momentum to the left, continues that way. Over to Jewel Campbell. Now Pritch goes with the left, a little too tall there from Sammy Woods. Quite an ambitious effort from Woods, I will note. Tolbert with Tapia calling for it on the close side, but chooses to go back to Kalita in the middle. And Kalita unable to connect with Woods there. And now Tapia regroups and goes all the way back to Sparkowski. Tapia to Tolbert. Tolbert gets past one and foul will be called. Looks like Tolbert just wanted to keep playing there. And clock will be stopped as a little bit of a frustration there as Lauren Wrigley stuck her foot in as, as Tolbert was trying to take that. And Wrigley will be awarded a yellow card. So now two yellow cards for Maryland. The frustration coming out a little bit, Zach. Yeah, you could almost feel that's probably just emblematic of how this game has been going. But there was just no reason for that extra foul right there. The last yellow card you could sort of understand because it was a breakaway, Michigan trying to score, and Wrigley kind of just needed to do whatever she could. Or that was, that was Kustas, rather, with the first one. But Wrigley right there, that was just unnecessary. Michigan continuing to play with a very high energy level, fighting for every ball. Kelsey Smith has come back after subbing off in the first half with an injury. So it's good to see her back out there. As a little too physical was Pritch there. While we have a pause, it's worth mentioning that this game is being produced by students at the University of Michigan as part of the Big Ten Network Student U program. An on-campus experience that is unique to the Big Ten, Student U is a part of an educational mission to teach the next generation of sports production professionals. For more information, visit Big10Network.com slash Student U. That's Big10Network.com slash Student U. Lifted in here by Liz Beardsley, yet again from around midfield. And with how the first half went, we thought it was difficult for Michigan to increase their level in the second half, but they may have just done that, uh, Zach, with this uh, impressive showing in the second half. Yeah, a little slow out of the gate, which I didn't think was necessarily a bad thing because if they can just keep play scattered, keep Maryland off the board, that's enough to win. But then they really started moving faster these last 10 minutes or so. A chance there from Michigan. As that was Jewel Campbell in the box, and now Michigan Still maintaining possession, bouncing in the box. Campbell awkwardly coming back for that one and sends it out for a goal kick. 
As it looks like we will have a goalie substitution here for Michigan, the first of the season. As Stephanie Sparkowski subs off and Sophie Homan will see her first action of the season. Sophie Homan, the sophomore goalkeeper from Rochester, Michigan. And of course, as you had mentioned, Michigan hasn't scored four games in a four goals in a game all season. The only time they scored three, it was a three to two win over Western Michigan. So you can see why Sparkowski hasn't gotten a chance to sit at all this season. Finally, Wolverines with a comfortable lead, able to give her a breather and give Homan her first game action. Yeah, the way Homan's jumping around there, getting onto the pitch, looks like she wants to come up and try to score for the Wolverines. She's bringing a lot of energy, seeing her first action of the season. So very exciting opportunity for Homan. Jones. Uh, attempt there by Lisa McIntyre goes awry, and now Michigan with a chance. Pritch just wide. What a chance there. Sammy Woods with a clever ball in for Gabrielle Pritch, trying to find her second goal of the night. And Michigan now up to 20 shots, 21 shots here this afternoon. 10 shots on goal. They are really pressing. Not much to lose even with this 4-0 lead, even if something were to go wrong and they let one in. Like, likely wouldn't change the outcome of this game. And it's very impressive what they've been able to do. These last like 15, 20 minutes, they've looked arguably as dominant as they have at any point this game. Jewel Campbell chasing this down from a long ways away. and That goes out for a throw in for Michigan. Trying to add to their season high goals. Looking for their fifth of the game. As Tapia send this one in, gets it back from Pritch. And now into Campbell. Now Pritch again, overlapping play. Campbell with the left. And blocked there nicely and out for another throw in for the Wolverines. Yeah, very good defensive play there by Katie Coyo. And this is what we've seen the Terrabins have to do. A lot of times it's really the one-on-one -on -one and who can end up winning. Terrapins have gotten some of those stops, but they've been in too many of those situations, and they're not going to win every time. That's really the reason that this is a 4 nothing game, particularly the first half goals. Looks like Kalita was held up a little bit by her teammate Campbell there, but... Gives the foul in frustration. And Maryland finally with possession back. There's no plus like home on Big Ten Plus. In addition to live games, your subscription includes exclusive access to Big Ten Network's library of classic games, award-winning original programming, and specially curated digital channels that highlight your favorite Big Ten school 24-7. Explore all Big Ten Plus has to offer on the app or at BigTenPlus.com. You will see the second game of this doubleheader, the Michigan men taking on the Wisconsin men at 3 p.m. That will be on Big Ten Plus as well. So tune back in for that one. As now 12 minutes left in the second half and barring a extraordinary comeback in the game. I guess we would end at a draw, so it is in the game no matter what. We don't have overtime in conference play in the Big Ten. Kalita who tried to sneak it in there for Bosley, but well defended by Maryland. And now Bosley finally gets it. Bosley goes to the middle, goes to her left. And that header goes out, and it will be another corner for the Wolverines. Their fifth of the match. And we saw this is the third one of the second half. First one they got in, second one got really close, although there was a foul as well. But really like the approach I've seen from Michigan, 
on these corner kicks. Set up a little back, and then they're just going to try to push it past the defense. So a couple substitutions there from Michigan. Pritch and Kalita getting a break as this corner goes far post and will come out for a Maryland goal kick. So that was Campbell delivering the corner there. The only starters still in the game for the Wolverines are Sammy Woods, Jenna Lang, and Tamia Tolbert, as well as Avery Peters. Tapia plays this back for Sophie Homan, getting a couple touches for her in her first action of the season. Nice pass, but unable to handle it was Jewel Campbell. Sorry, Campbell Jewel. <laughs> Maryland with space to work. Kelsey Smith guarded by Tolbert. Tolbert well defended there, still battling for it. And Tolbert comes away with that one. Jenna Lang running up the left. Still going. Cuts to the inside. Now goes out to Burrell. Burrell one on one. Goes back to her right. Now back to Lang. Lang now Vicky Jones in the middle. Jones crosses over and slides this one in. And now in for Bridenstein and Woods just over the net. Beautiful play there for Michigan. Sammy Woods with a wide open header, but couldn't get on top of that and put a fifth on the goal and a hat trick. As we haven't mentioned that Woods is searching for her first hat trick of the season. You know, we've seen a few of those headers go high. It is a good look because it really opens up the field the way the Wolverines are passing it in from the corner. Just not quite able to execute on some of them, but not too much to worry about as they do still have that 4 nothing lead. And they've gotten that by setting up good looks, and that really is how they scored the two goals here in the second half. Okay, so that was Woods' sixth shot of the night. Four of them have been on goal, so just applying so much pressure on this Terrapin defense. Bridenstine steps in to take that one. Should have mentioned Bridenstein. Also one of the Michigan starters still in the game. And has played every minute of the game, along with Tolbert and Peters. We'll see if they go the full 90. They might as well at this point. Campbell Jewell working with Burrell. Crossover here, goes to her right and tried to find the run. Of Zia Mongat. Substitution into the game for the Wolverines as Burrell in the middle, pass from Mongat. And Michigan substitutions playing well of still applying pressure for the Wolverines. Bridenstine, low driven ball. And now out for Maryland as the legs look a little slower. Spaces are opening up. Temperature has warmed up out there, reaching near 80. A long attempt there from Peyton Bernard. Six thirty left in the game. Tapia trying to get through a couple 
Maryland defenders and poked away there by Campbell Jewell. And now Vicki Jones' pass. She's got a little tangled up with her feet and that one goes out of bounds for a Maryland throw. And it really does feel like, I'm noticing Maryland dribblers pushing past their teammates too often. And when they do that, that's giving them nowhere to pass. That's the main cause of their long range shots. Yes, they're down for nothing. They're probably not gonna come back to win at this point. So I think they really need to reduce the urgency and be a little more patient with the ball, giving the rest of the offense time to push down the field. That'll create the looks. That's what Michigan has done very well. They've had either traffic in the center or they've gone outside and then come back in. That's where the creativity leads to goals. Little bit of offensive pressure here applied by the Terrapins. Michigan could tend to just pass it around their own box and now finally get it out with Lang. Laying long ball, looking for the run of Mongat. Unable to close the ground there, but Coyle's clear only goes as far as, as Bosley. Bosley with a left hand, left footed shot, but stays on the ground and comfortably saved there by Liz Beardsley, who has been in goal for the entire match, continuing that trend. She hasn't missed a minute so far this season. That is her seventh save of the match. Yeah, that was the case right there. Wolverines weren't entirely set up well offensively, but Terrapins weren't really set up defensively either, so probably was the best option to get that quick shot off. Didn't work, but had they waited, that probably would have given Maryland enough time to bring their defense back. Back to Lang. Jones. And Peters. Now Tolbert taking it herself. Again, contact there from Tolbert. And the foul will be called on Maryland. It'll be on Sophie Venice. Venice confused at why that foul was called on her as Tolbert was storming in and just kind of ran into her after that pass. Nonetheless, a complete game played by the Wolverines. Defense has been solid. Offense has converted, has created chances and converted. Those are the two important things you have to do both of to win a soccer game. Maryland with some chances here. Overlapping play and quick out of her net was Sophie Homan. Not falling asleep back there in her first action of the season, certainly. Yeah, Maryland broke away a little, but it looked like it was only still two players moving downfield. The numbers still favored the Wolverines, even if the momentum favored the Terps. That allowed it to end up being an easy stop. Tapia to Jones. One touch pass to Peters. Two minutes, 20 seconds left in the game. We'll see if Michigan tries to put another one on the board as Bridenstine trying to play it to herself, but a little too far. And back to the, the Terrapins as another Michigan sub comes in. Jasmine Reigns comes back in. Saw eight minutes in the first half, and we'll see the final two in this second half. Ball up ahead for Peyton Bernard. 
Bernard trying to put the Terrapins on the board, and this shot just goes wide left. Had a chance there as she cut back to her right foot, but unable to get much mustard on that shot. As now under 90 seconds left in the game. Ball ping pong around. A couple opposing players there. We'll go out for a Maryland throw. How do you think this game works in favor of Michigan with their momentum going into next weekend's matchup? How important is it to get a result like this? I think it definitely gives them a lot of confidence on the offensive side because you look at their game against Penn State, they really had chances, but they just weren't great chances and they just didn't capitalize well enough. This shows them they are able to capitalize on offense. They haven't scored four games in a goal all season. We know what the Wolverines' defense is, but having this type of offensive outburst I think really will give them confidence going into – next week of course tougher competition there we'll see what they're able to do with that game against Michigan State can they keep this going keep the same offensive philosophy for one and then secondly will it work as well and the clock strikes zero Michigan celebrates a comprehensive victory 4-0 over the Terrapins